What's up, everyone? My name is Larissa Shanti with Shanti Moves. Uh, welcome if it's your first time to the channel. Thank you so much for checking it out. Today, we're going to be going over shoulder stand and plow pose. Both of these poses are really great for uh, calming down the nervous system once we get comfortable in the pose. In the beginning, it can be kind of awkward. And in fact, uh, a little bit scary sometimes. So taking it easy in this pose will give you modifications. Really listen to the body on this one because we're using the neck a lot here. And when the neck is involved, you know, we wanna be extra sensitive and careful and make sure we're not gonna tweak it, injure it or anything like that. So if you wanna check it out, let's get down to that mat. Okay, shoulder stand and plow pose it is. So we're gonna do a little bit of a warm up first, especially since our neck, you know, and our shoulders and a few other components are involved that we want to be really warmed up before going into this pose. So if you want to join me, let's come into a cross-legged position or if you're more comfortable on your knees, feel free to do that. Once you get nice and settled, hands wherever you like. On your exhale, let the chin drop down to the chest. Let your head hang nice and heavy. Maybe feel gravity doing the work for you here. Feeling that stretch go down in between the shoulder blades. And then as you feel ready, gently rock the head from side to side here, bringing your right ear to your right shoulder, rolling the chin across the chest, left ear to the left shoulder. And gently rocking from side to side like that for a few rounds, tuning into the breath as you go. Feeling how the stretch shifts to the sides of the neck. So you move from one shoulder to the other. How that stretch can go all the way down, maybe all the way down the spine or to the middle back. And then bring that chin back to the center. Inhale, lift the head up nice and slow. Let's take the arms wide here. On your inhale, maybe lift the heart space, opening up the chest. And then on your exhale, lace the hands behind the back. And then start to send those arms long down the back. Again, lifting the heart. Breathing here on your inhale, feel that heart lifting up towards the sky. And exhale, release. Let's do an eagle arm pose. So again, take those hands nice and wide, bring the right hand in, the left hand on top, bend the elbows, then wrap the arms together. Maybe you can grab opposite, palm, or bring the palms together here, or if it feels better, you can just grab opposite shoulders. Either way, breathing in between the shoulder blades. Feeling that back body expansion. Rooting down through the sit bones, getting nice and tall through the spine as you sit and breathe. On your inhale, unravel the arms, take them wide, lift the heart. On the exhale, left arm comes in, right hand on top, wrap it around or grab opposite shoulders. Rooting down through the sit bones, reaching up through the crown of the head, nice and tall. And then continue to breathe in between the shoulder blades, feeling that back body expansion.
On your next inhale, unravel the arms, take them wide, lift the heart. Exhale, let the hands float down. Let's inhale, take our right hand up, and then exhale, bending over the body, keeping those sit bones rooting down, heart shining up towards the sky, reaching through the right fingertips. And then inhale, coming back up, right hand comes down, left arm reaches up high. Exhale, bringing it over the body, just going to your own depth, keeping those sit bones anchoring down into your mat. Heart is shining up towards the sky, energy through the left fingers, feeling that stretch in the left side, ribs, arm. And then inhale, coming back up, let that hand float down. Unravel the legs, scooch down your mat, bring your hands underneath your knees, and then roll the spine down. And we're gonna come into our bridge start. So knees are bent, heels are towards the bum at hip width distance. Hands are down by your, by your side, palms facing down. And then when you feel ready, on your inhale, press down through the feet, lift the hips up. And then if you feel good here, lace the hands together. Start to tuck the shoulder blades underneath the body. Drawing the shoulder blades together, lifting the hips high, pressing down through the feet. Then your chest comes towards your chin and then lengthen your chin away from your chest. So you're getting long through the back side of the neck. And then breathing here for a few. Trying to feel that expansion in the heart. Gently hugging the thighs towards each other. And then when you're ready, untuck the shoulders, release the fingers, Roll the spine down one vertebrae at a time until the bum touches last. Beautiful. So if you just did that bridge pose with me and you weren't able to get the shoulders underneath the body and the hands laced together, that's fine. But know that that might mean that shoulder stand might not be for you today because we really need that mobility and uh, strength in our scapulas for our shoulder stand. Not only that shoulder and scapula strength, but the core strength as well. So don't worry, I'll be giving you plenty of modifications to work in that direction, but uh, just know that that m means that it might not be for you today. Uh, another word to the audience, <laughs> um, we, Watch me on the first one. I'm going to be demonstrating the whole uh, pose. So up to shoulder stand, then into plow pose. And uh, yeah, so watch that first one the whole way through. And then we'll do it again and you can do it to the sound of my voice. Uh, the reason why I say this is because uh, when you're doing your shoulder stand and your plow pose, you don't want to be turning your head, all right? You want your gaze to be straight up towards the sky. So that's why it's important to maybe just watch the first one. Don't have your iPad by your mat and be looking over at the iPad trying to do it along with me, right? Because that's not going to be good for your neck. So take a pause, watch it, and then we'll do it again and you can do it to the sound of my voice. All right. Sounds good? I hope it sounds good. Okay. So we're gonna come down onto your back. You come into that bridge pose start. Your hands are down by your side, your palms are facing down. And then draw your knees up to your chest. You can use a little bit of finger strength here so you can maybe like tent your fingertips, press down into your mat, engage the arms here. And then on your inhale, you rock your hips up and over and rest your knees on your forehead. Once you are here, start to bring your hands underneath 
your back. So your hands are on your lower back. And then once you feel stable here, you can start to slowly extend the legs up towards the sky. It's okay if they're bent. It's okay if they're over here. It's okay if they're still down here. But we're just working to get into this direction, right? So eventually our hips are stacked over our shoulders, our knees are stacked over our hips, and our ankles are stacked over our knees. So we're in one nice line. And then we should be able to breathe freely here. We usually stay in this pose for about 10 breaths to kind of allow the full effects of the pose to take place. And then we usually drop down into halasana from here. So halasana, your toes start to go over your head. Toes reaching for the earth. Ooh, blocks are there. <laughs> the toes are reaching for the earth. And then again, your hips are stacking over your shoulders and your legs are trying to lengthen and engage. So you're lifting the back sides of your knees towards the sky. Now, if your toes are here and your legs are long and you're feeling nice and solid, you can release the hands. Either grab either side of your mat or you can lace the hands together. Again, making sure you can breathe easy in this pose. Then to come out, hands come back underneath the hips. Bring your knees to your forehead, toes point towards the sky. Extend the legs back up here. This time take the hands all, or take the feet over the head. You can bring the hands down and then roll out. So using your core here, Slowly lowering the vertebrae down. And then the legs. Whew. Okay, so hopefully you watched that whole one. You weren't trying to do it with me because now we're gonna be going over it again. Uh, and if there is any pain or discomfort throughout, uh, maybe just skip to the end where I'll show you the modifications that we can use for this pose. Okay, cool. So if you wanna come with me on this one, we're gonna come into our bridge pose. Feet are planted, knees are bent. Feet are at hip width distance. Arms are down by your side, palms are facing down. You can tent your fingertips here if you want. Take an inhale, rock the hips up, knees on top of the forehead resting then bring your hands underneath your palms sorry hands underneath your lower back and then if you feel sturdy here you're welcome to stay here or you can start to extend those legs up to the sky and again if it's okay if they're bent it's okay if the feet are over the head, but we're just working to find that straight line, hips, knees, and ankles stacking. Trying to find that breath here. Maybe feeling that blood rushing down from the legs into the upper body and head. And then when you feel ready, start to let those toes go down behind you. Touching down onto the earth. It's okay also if the knees are really bent here too, that's totally fine. But trying to find the length and extension. If your legs are totally straight, you can take your arms down, either grabbing either side of your mat or lacing behind your back.
Once you're ready, bring the hands back to your lower back. Bend the knees, bring them onto the forehead. Extend the legs back to the sky so feet are over the head this time. Then hands come down, roll the spine down nice and slow, one at a time. Good, then we're gonna do a little counter stretch here. So we're gonna do a fish pose. So your hands come underneath your bum, palms are facing down. Feet are together, toes pointing. Then on your in inhale, press down into your elbows to lift the heart and then gently rest the head on the mat. Most of the weight is still in our forearms and elbows. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. Tuck the chin, lower the head down and shoulders and release. Beautiful, bend the knees, roll off down to your side, and then press yourself back up. Beautiful, so I'm gonna show you a couple modifications we can use. Um, one of my favorite ones is using a blanket. So I don't have a blanket today, but I do have a very thin mat. Forgot to Forgot to bring it into frame, my bad. So, if you have a towel or a blanket, folding it up until it's a nice little square that's wide enough to fit your shoulders. Probably want it a little bit thicker than this, but this is what we got today, so we're working with that. Place it at the top of your mat, but make sure that there's plenty of space for your head to go at the top. When you roll down, you want your shoulders in line with the top edge of that fabric. So the fabric's not getting bunched up going underneath the neck, which can kind of create problems when you go into the full pose. So you wanna make sure that the blanket is right across that edge with the shoulders. And then you do what we just did. So hands down by your side, palms facing down. On your inhale, rock the hips up. Knees onto the forehead. Hands come to the lower back. Squeezing the elbows together here. So you're kind of engaging those scapulas. Start to extend the legs up. Going at your own pace. Remember, it's fine if they're bent, but working towards a straight line. And then on your exhale, you take the toes behind you. See if I can find that block. Yes, beautiful. So the block is already there for me. And this is what we do to modify our halasana, so our plow pose. So my toes have found the block. There's a little bit more space in the body here. I can breathe a little bit easier. And this is just a little bit more accessible. So you can take that, you can use the block action, or you can bend the knees and keep the legs really bent like so. Good to come back out, knees to the forehead, extend feet over the head, release the hands, roll the spine down. And then you can do your counter pose here too. So hands underneath, palms facing down, toes together, sorry, feet together, toes pointing. On your inhale, press down into the arms, lift the heart. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. Next inhale, chin to the chest, lower back down and release. So that is option one. Uh, that's also really helpful if you happen to be a woman that has extra big uh, boobs. <laughs> it can be very, very helpful. So that's option one. And then option two is doing a more restorative style shoulder stand. So we don't really need to get into the neck very much at all with this one. Um, so if you have any kind of neck issues, this is definitely a better option for you. And also you're gonna get pretty much the exact same effects 
that you would get with a regular shoulder stand. So you can either take one or two blocks. I'm gonna go for two blocks on this first one. Uh, I prefer to do two block stacking versus one block on the medium height because the two block stacking like this just gives you a wider base to work with and it's less uh, likely to tip and um, fall over. So have your two black have your two blocks <laughs> stacked. Also a stack of books works really well, but make sure that they're not gonna slip. Beautiful. When you are ready, you come down onto the mat. And then we're gonna go into our bridge pose at first here. So knees are bent, feet are at hip width. Arms are down by your side, palms pressing down into your mat. On your inhale, you press down into the feet, lift the hips up, try to lift the hips up high enough so you can slide those blocks underneath your back. And you want those blocks on the lower part of your back, so that hard part, also known as your sacrum, because if it's too high on your back, it's not gonna feel good on your spine. And so once you got those settled right on your sacrum or your lower part, that hard part of your lower back, take a rest here. This is also a really nice restorative bridge pose, so you can take this option in class if you like but we're doing shoulder stand to say. So come with me. Bring the knees up to the chest. Or sorry, knees up to the sky. And then you can just straighten the legs from here. Sometimes you need to adjust a little bit. Make sure the blocks are in the right place and not on the spine. Also squishy blocks are a little bit better than cork blocks for this one. So if you have that option, squishy blocks are better. But you can just leave your feet dangling in the air again. It's okay if the knees are bent. And this gives you all the same benefits, that inversion uh, benefits of shoulder stand without actually having to go into the neck and thoracic spine so much. And then we're also kind of working towards the direction of maybe getting into our full shoulder stand, if that is what we want uh, to do with our bodies. Beautiful. And then if you want, you can go into your plow from here or you can just set the feet down, coming back to your bridge. You press down through the feet, lift the hips up just high enough so you can remove those blocks, set them off to the side, roll the spine down. Maybe bring the knees to the chest, little squeeze, a little rocking from side to side if that feels good on the lower back. Beautiful, hands underneath the knees, rock back and forth until you feel like you've got enough momentum to come all the way up. And that's it. That's what I got for you today on shoulder stand and plow pose. I hope that that was clear. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, if you feel a little unsure about doing it at all, uh, then don't. <laughs> Wait until you have an instructor that can help you. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so, so much. Uh, today we're going to be fro focusing. <laughs> they also come with a little bit of danger around the neck area. Stupid drilling. Stupid drilling. Shush. Shush.